I will give you a bit of a nudge, by the way. Um, in order to find out what our constant integration is, we're gonna need to use some of the data in the question that was provided, right? Now, uh, probably the way that I would say it is I would say, okay, if you go back to the question, um, you've got an initial velocity um, and it's also, even though it's kind of implied, it doesn't just get like stated for you. It says that particle is projected upwards in a medium and the um, Y is the point of projection, right? So um, we can define if the point of proje projection is, um, sorry, the height above the point of projection is Y, then the point of projection itself has to be by definition Y equals zero. So therefore my next line after this is that um, when, whoopsie daisy, let's actually write it. When time is equal to zero, even though I don't have any time variable in here, I have the other um, unknowns, y and v, that I actually know at time zero. So the initial velocity was 30, and um, by definition, my initial uh, displacement from that point of projection is zero. So those are going to be my v equals 30 and my y equals zero, they're gonna be what I substitute in. Now I've got a couple of people putting it into the chat, which is great, and it's nice when you get the same answer as someone else, but let's actually convince ourselves that this is the case. And um, catch me if I get any issues with my, um, uh, with my arithmetic here. Okay, I'm gonna put in a 30 over here, minus 50 log of 50 plus 30. Those are the two places that V appears. Um, you can see over on the right hand side, you're just getting zero plus C. So if I make C the subject, it looks like I'm getting 30 minus 50 log 80 on the right hand side. Okay, <laughs> yes, thank you, Emmanuel. Sorry, you can't just put thumbs up on, on Zoom like you can in Teams, which was one of the nice things I missed about it. Okay, so I'm, I'm always there, right? I've got my constant, and remember the whole question was, find y as a function of v, and you can see y is just hanging out there. So once I do my substitution, there's just a little bit of algebraic manipulation required to actually get this answer. So let's substitute back in. Substituting, um, I'm going to get, uh, what have I got here? So I'm just gonna take everything here, ta-da, none of that changes, and then I'm going to add, um, well, I'm being exceptionally lazy this morning. I'm gonna add the constant of integration that I found over there. And now I just need to tidy up, make y the subject. And I'm gonna use some of my log laws while I'm at it to just try and make everything as neat and tidy as I can. So um, I'm going to um, subtract all of this from both sides um, because that'll make minus a fifth y the subject. So if I make that the subject like so, I'm gonna get this duplicate over there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract this constant. So minus 30 <clears throat> plus 50 log 80 over there on the uh, right hand side there. You can see all my signs have switched around. And what I can do at this point is I can say, let's gather the, um, those normal terms and then separate them out from the log terms. The reason why that's useful is because if you have that uh, V minus 30 right there, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, then say, okay, let's uh, highlight this term here, which is a log term, and this term here, which is a log term. Um, you can see this is a positive um, here, and then this one's a negative. So if I take out a factor of 50, um, and then I say, well, what logs remain? Because you're doing a subtraction of this log, take away that log, um, the logs, you can do a division in there, right? So you're gonna get the 80 on the denominator, uh, sorry, on the numerator rather, and the 50 plus V on the denominator. So if this is something that's a bit like fuzzy in your brain, then you're gonna need to go back to um, your log laws to remember that. Now you can see from there, all I need to do is make Y the subject, which is to multiply through by minus five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yep, take that whole lot there and I'm going to multiply through by minus five and that will give me Y. Okay, now I have not quite left enough space here because I want to do something on the next page as you can see. So I'm going to be a bit cheeky. We have Y as our function of uh, velocity and now we want to find its maximum height. So think about this with me. This shouldn't be too difficult to work out, um, though you will need your calculator. Find Y as a function of velocity V done Maximum height happens when you know you've, you shoot up at 30 meters per second as per the question, initial velocity 30 meters per second. But then because gravity is fighting against you and air resistance is fighting against you, as soon as you start um, you know, in your upward journey, you begin to slow down. And you're gonna slow down up until some point that you stop. And once you stop, that is your maximum height. So to find maximum height, what I need to do is substitute back into this equation here the place where velocity is 
zero. Does that make sense? Maximum height occurs um, at the stationary point, literally when you're stationary and you stop moving. So what I can do is I'll say, I reckon I can just sneak it in. Um, maximum height occurs when V equals zero, i.e. when y is equal to, all right, and just have a look at what you get here, right? Um, that term is gonna be zero and that term's going to be zero. So it looks to me like I get minus five outside of, um, that minus 30 is still hanging around, the plus 50 is there, and then I've got a log of eight over five because 80 over 50 is gonna um, simplify it to that. So can you go and pop into the chat once you have reached for your calculator, maybe you've already done it, and you should get a value out for that. Can you try that for me, please? Fantastic, yes. Okay, we've got a bunch of answers there. I'll wait for everyone else. <laughs> Very nice, that's a, that's, that's a nice little, I don't mind that little bit of shade being thrown there, that's totally okay with me, uh, so long as it's appropriate. Okay, so yeah, you get like 32.499 something or other, so I think 32.5, I'll just chuck it in on the side here, 32.5 is totally fine. Make that decimal point really obvious. Okay, now well done. As promised, I said I was gonna let you now go and attempt something else with this question. Um, this is a really cool situation because we have modeled quite successfully with a very small amount of calculus, I think, in the scheme of things. Um, what's going on in this situation? What happens when it goes up? The obvious question is, well, what happens when it goes down? And you can ask all kinds of different questions about this, but the particular question I'm going to ask that I think is um, interesting to pose is, well, if it, it goes up to 32.5 meters, right? I know how far it's gonna travel down um, to return. It'll be the same 32.5 meters. But now the question is, for me, uh, how long is that gonna take, right? I don't need to ask a displacement question anymore because I've already got all the information I need there. I'm interested in a time question. How long does it take after it reaches its maximum height? How long does it take to return to the ground? Now, I'm going to give you guys a good, like, you know, six to seven minutes at least, I think, to make some headway through this. I'm not going to scaffold this as much as I did before, but I will just give you two um, sort of nudges in the right direction so we're all kind of doing this um, somewhat consistently, okay? Here's my first big tip. Um, as per my introduction, I think it will be helpful to you if you think about this downward journey as a whole different situation, as it were, okay? Um, think about, redefine, um, you know, we, we define y equals zero as the point of projection in this first part of the question, right? But what I'm gonna ask you to do is to now define y equals zero, your origin, as the, where your new situation begins, which is to say, um, at the top, where you have um, hit your maximum height, let's call that y equals zero, let's define that as the origin. Um, and if we're defining that as the origin, to make the numbers convenient for us, again, like you saw in this situation right here, in our general theory introduction, um, let's think about downward now, as the positive direction. So if you're starting at zero, okay, traveling downwards toward the Earth, we're gonna call that positive. So um, your force of gravity is going to be positive in this case. We're so used to thinking of it as negative, but you'll see why we're doing it as positive as you progress through the question, okay? So there's the first big tip. We're gonna reset um, the origin to be the, the, the start of this new downward journey, so it's the, the maximum height. Um, we're going to set down as a positive direction, um, and I guess since we're resetting those, and we might as well reset time as well, let it be equal time time zero. Um, sounds like a trick out of the, you know, what is it, Loki's TV series and then Time Variance Authority resets the timeline, okay? Just forget about everything that happened before. Um, time zero, y equals zero, downward equals positive. The last tip I'm going to give you, the secondary tip is, when you go to solve this and you want to find out what is this time that it takes to return to the ground? And let's get it to, I don't know, a um, couple of decimal places will do us, right? You're going to create an equation which you cannot just solve just by looking at it or just by factorizing a quadratic or something like that. Um, you're gonna need some technology to help you with this. I hope this rings a bell from like some of the statistics that you did, um, you know, dealing with say the, um, 
the probability density function of the normal distribution. You could not integrate that thing by hand. Um, it's just a mess. So therefore we use technology or tables to be able to read the appropriate values to get the area under the curve, okay? So you're gonna need some technology to help you with this. So I encourage you to use Desmos. Um, you don't have to use it in a very sophisticated way, but the equation you're gonna get um, you're not going to be able to solve by hand. You'll need something that can solve it um, for you. So, I mean, you could use um, you know, Wolfram Alpha or something like that if you prefer, um, but I'm certainly going to show my, show my solution through Desmos. So, there are my clues. Uh, reset the situation, and then when you get to a point where you're solving an equation for time, that's it. Remember, this is a how long does it take question. Um, don't be dismayed when you look at the equation and think, uh, do I solve that? Um, use technology to help you. Uh, I read 8.06 um, as the time on my clock, so I'm gonna give you at least until, uh, let's, let's call it 8.13, okay? Um, and what I'll ask you to do is, if you're getting close to that spot, watch the time. Um, if you're done, you're like, yeah, I'm totally ready, post that in the chat. If you say, actually, I'm nowhere near done, I'm like going in circles, or I'm hitting a brick wall, please post that in the chat too, so that I can give you a bit of extra time. Um, but right now, I'm gonna be quiet, let you have a think, have a play, and then um, we'll come back together around 8.12, 8.13, depending on what you say to me, okay? Good luck, off you go.